Hi, I'm Janice Hartful, and this is an exciting event for me. It's been long coming and waiting. Um, this is my painting. It's called Canadian Niagara Falls. And I took this photo like about 40 some years ago. And standing there at Niagara Falls, never even thought that I would paint the picture 40 years later. <laughs> this is a painting. It's called Pearl. That was my grandmother's name. My grandmother uh, was born in 1889 and uh, she developed a cold. It developed into pneumonia and she died of pneumonia in 1926. It's a very precious picture to me. I always, always wanted a grandma, but I hope that, that my grandma in heaven looks at this picture and says, good job. This painting is my most favorite one. It's called Per Adua Ad Astra. And that is Latin. And uh, NASA uses that on their ships. And it is translated to through adversity to the stars. And this painting was an idea that I got about 30 years ago. And I was in the movie theater watching Star Trek V. I'm an absolutely huge Trekkie. <laughs> and the, I just loved the last scene of that movie. Everyone left the theater and I'm standing there listening to the music and watching the credits and the camera panned upward and I just thought it was the coolest thing that I ever saw in my life and I always wanted to recreate that and so this painting was created out of three different pictures of research. And this is titled Kermit. And um, I thought that was a cute name for this frog. And um, we did the, the underpainting with black and white, and then we uh, used color over, a, a color glaze. And not a favorite uh, person of amphibians and snakes and reptiles. That's just not my thing. But. I looked at it and I thought, okay, he's pretty cute and it's, it's, it'll be colorful. And so my teacher said, so Janice, after you finish doing this painting, does it give you any other love for snakes? And I said, no. <laughs> and then this is a, a rose, but, and um, it's titled A Rose by Any Other Name. And this was done I, with black and white underpainting. And um, then when I started working on the, the rose colors and the pinks, it was just, wow, fantastic. And I loved doing it. And it just, it didn't take long to do for me. And it was just a great experience. So thank you for listening to my portion of the program. My name is Kathy Gentry, and um, I've been taking classes, and these are all reflections of projects we had in class. And this is the black and white painting, my, and it's actually a picture I took of my Lily at home. And um, it, we started out with black and white, and then we um, added glazes over it to bring out the colors. And this is a picture of a stormy night, actually, from Mishawaka, Indiana. And, we had a, a cloud. We were supposed to paint the sky, so that was a picture I picked to do it. And then we had another black and white picture that we did. And um, I like animals very much, so I decided to do a jaguar. And um, started out black and white, and ended up that color. <laughs> then the swan, Sharon, gave us photos to pick from. 
and I picked this one and um, I call her nature's beauty because she's so beautiful and the sunlight coming down on her and everything and I just I like swans I like to go to lakes and see the swans I really enjoy how beautiful and majestic they are so that was perfect <laughs> My name is Becky Powell, and this is our show. I've done three paintings of the rhinoceros, the elephant, and the African wild dog are endangered species. So it's kind of a collection, and we started with different colors of underpaintings, which the rhino was blue and white, the elephant was a brown and white underpainting. And the, the wild dog, I think, was orange and white. And then you put your laces on top. Flower was a black and white underpainting. And uh, up close, kind of a crop picture. And nighttime fishing picture was a, um, a scenery that was done in, I think, a blue and white underpainting. And the glaze is on top. That's about it. I've got three pieces in today's show, and um, they are alike in some ways, and then in others very different. Um, one thing that they have in common is they all three are a close look at a, a single subject, um, and and they're all um, objects that are found in nature. I um, the technique is um, the technique that I've used in these is um, different. One, the first one, the tiger, um, is painted in a more uh, loose style. There is a red underpainting, um, so I've tried to use contrasting colors to to make um, make it more interesting and vibrant. So I've used reds and greens, um, and then the strong darks and lights that naturally occur on the uh, in the tiger's face. I usually concentrate on line, but I'm learning and I'm trying to develop my ability to understand light and shadow um, and how those can be used to form light, to, to form images. So, uh, so working with light and shadow, um, these two paintings were done with an underpainting that was really just, a, just value studies. So underneath this painting, um, I used sepia tones, so browns and creams and whites. Under this painting, this was blacks and white and gray. Once the value study was done, um, I found that, that the forms appeared and then I could apply thin layers, thin glazes of color. Um, and they're largely monochromatic. The painting entitled Leaves is a study of the, the color green actually and, and um, you can see a lot of contrast between the darks and the lights. Um, the, the, the water lily um, is kind of uh, working with a lot of pastel shades and then um, a subtle green in the background, green being the complement of red to, to um, make the flower actually kind of pop off the page. So I'm enjoying working with um, light and shadow and the values, value studies of color. Hi, I'm Sharon Ott, and these are some of my paintings that I brought to the show. This is my froggy, and he's a very realistic rendition of a close-up of a poison dart frog. And it started with a black and white underpainting, and there's many, many, many layers of paint on top. Maybe about seven, eight layers to get those colors.
and that gives it that uh, real 3D look. This is a, a little cloud. It's clouds over the skies in Cassopolis, which is in Cass County, Michigan. At this time, we were studying the sublime in art and how to create the wonder and grandeur of nature in our art. And we, um, we touch on quite a bit of art history. This is Rust Forest in the summer. You could see looking over the creek that the light is glowing because the light is hitting the creek in the background there. And that gives it that glow. Whereas in the area that I was standing is in a lot of shadow. And I put in this little moth. These are called white mustard moths. And they are endangered because they eat only the mustard, wild mustard plants. And there's not that many of them left anymore. Over here, I have a couple prints. I have this, which is a print called the Juggler. And this is one of 20. This comes from my painting entitled, Let the Competition Commence. And this is called Freedom Dreams. This again is a print, so I brought the two prints, and this is one of 20 also. So these are signed, limited edition prints. And that is our art show. Thank you for coming and enjoying everyone's work. We've had a great time making the art. So it's it's just a study. And I always felt I never had a grandma. And all the girls at school, in grade school, would say, oh, I'm going to grandma's house. And I went home and said to my mom, how's come I don't have a grandma? Well, <clears throat> she didn't explain that to me until I got older, why grandma wasn't around. And then.